Misinformation about the coronavirus might be the most contagious thing about it. Talking about the reality of coronavirus, we have Jasmine Patterson on Demystifying News. Good evening, and thank you for joining us today. We are continuing to monitor the outbreak of the mysterious new coronavirus. So far, it has been known that the coronavirus is from the same family of viruses that caused the deadly SARS and MERS epidemics. Authorities traced the outbreak to a seafood and live animal market in Wuhan, China, which has since been shut down. Some scientists suggest that the original source for this virus was bats sold in this market, as genomic sequences of the coronavirus and those of eastern bats living in China have been found to be similar. The number of confirmed cases has increasingly soared in the past few weeks, leading to the biggest quarantine in history. From today's report from the World Health Organization, there have been 28,060 confirmed cases in China, with 564 deaths, and 28,276 cases confirmed globally, with one death occurring in the Philippines. In Canada, there have been five confirmed cases so far. But how does the coronavirus spread, and is it as dangerous to us in North America as people say it to be? To learn more about this virus and its misconceptions, we talked to Dr. Caitlin Malarkey, a professor at McMaster University from the Department of Biochemistry and Biomedical Science. Um, coronaviruses are a large family of um, positive strand RNA viruses. Um, they're a very common infections. They infect a lot of different hosts. They infect humans, um, some other mammal species that maybe we can talk about. Um, coronaviruses are actually responsible for probably 10 to 20 percent of the colds we experience over flu and, um, cold and flu season, right? So a pathogen that's very, very common to us as humans. Um, this new coronavirus um, has some unique features. The unique factors are that first, the incubation period for this novel coronavirus can stay hidden in the body for up to 14 days, while the incubation period for viruses that cause ordinary flu is about two days. And while both the flu and the coronavirus have similar symptoms, including a fever, headache, cough, and muscle pain, those symptoms usually occur all at once if you have the flu, whereas patients with the coronavirus experience various symptoms over a longer period. Coronaviruses are a respiratory pathogen, so the main mode of transmission is going to be through respiratory droplets. When we talk, when we cough and we sneeze, um, we release particles, little droplets into the air. Some of these can be quite big, some of them, and most of those will fall pretty close um, to the infected individual. Some of them can be quite small and travel through the air um, and potentially infect other individuals. I think as a global scientific community, we should have a healthy amount of concern. And I think agencies like the WHO and individual country, you know, CDCs or their counterparts um, are taking the right approach, um, scanning people at airports, trying to um, isolate people that are identified really quickly, all of those things. Um, how, but how much should we really be concerned about it here in Canada? Um, probably not that much yet, okay? So we only have five confirmed cases, and of all the respiratory pathogens that you're going to be exposed to over the course of cold and flu season, this one rates very, very low, right? So we should be more concerned, in my opinion, with things like flu. So influenza infections in North America, um, there are millions of those during cold and flu season, and there are hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations and tens of thousands of deaths. If we compare that to the numbers for the coronavirus right now, there are 30,000 cases and um, hundreds of deaths. So um, I think the media has sensationalized parts of this story. Um, obviously, everyone should have access to good information and accurate information, and there are some really good um, reporting sources out there that we can point to that are doing a good job of covering the story. Um, but in certain cases, I think when you read media stories, you have to take some of the sensational claims with a grain of salt. Thank you so much, Dr. Malarkey, for that very informative interview. Now, on to another major issue in association with this disease, the concern and anxiety for mask wearers in the public. Is it because they are infected, or is it because they are taking preventative measures? To find out more, we visited the streets of the Greater Hamilton area. Hi, Jasmine. So people are increasingly worried about mask wearers, fearing that they are infected. So let's talk to the people in the public to see their reasons behind wearing a mask. I choose to wear this mask to help protect myself from the coronavirus. I wear this mask because I currently have a cold and I don't want to be spreading germs. I wear this mask to protect myself and others from germs. 
According to our survey, most individuals wear masks out of protection for themselves and to protect others from their own sickness, therefore out of cultural courtesy. So next time you see a person wearing a mask, there's no need to run the other way because you think they have the coronavirus. Thank you, Meghna. Just before we end off, it is important to know how to be cautious and take preventative steps. As of now, there is no current vaccination or available treatment for those infected with coronavirus. Care involves alleviating the symptoms of the patient. The best way to prevent the spread of the disease is by practicing good hygiene. This means washing hands thoroughly, especially before eating, after using the washroom, blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. Make sure not to touch your face with unwashed hands and try not to come in close proximity with those who are sick. It is obvious that there is mass hysteria all over the world. However, it is important to remain calm and rational. Please note that at a time like this, racially biased actions are not justified. Continue to stay informed, but take the time to ensure your information is coming from reputable sources. And remember, hand hygiene is the best way to prevent the spread of infections. This is Jasmine Patterson from Demystifying News, signing off.